Greetings everyone, welcome in this new live dedicated to the Mongol culture, the art, the music, and to the murder world. So welcome here. Uh, I'm very glad to see you again today. So maybe I will just warm up a little bit. As you can see, uh, I was, I am a little bit late today. Uh, I've been working all day on some little stuff uh, that actually the person in the VIP area of the Discord, they could see what I, I'm working on uh, since like uh, the last two days. So I really worked a lot today to try to finish tonight. <clears throat> so that's why I'm a little bit late. So hello, Matthias. Hello, Blaviken. Thanks for joining. So I will just warm up uh, a little bit uh, and then we will get started. Okay, <clears throat> so now that uh, I warmed up a little bit, we can get uh, started. So let me first uh, tell you, hello Karim, hello Andras, hello Angeran, bonjour maman. <laughs> um, so today, I will, um, as you can see in the title, I will share with you some way to play the gallop on the motherboard, the horse gallop on the motherboard. Um, but not just the gallop, uh, basically many kind of path, uh, kind of like the, the, the one that I know a little bit. Um, so I will not teach you a, a melody uh, today, but I will show you many many way to play the horse gallop uh, on the motherboard which will be very useful in the very near future to play the different kind of tatlak because um, this 
a very numerous way to play the horse gallop, the horse amble, the, the walk, the trot, and, and all that. Uh, it's very, very present, of course, in the B and in the Tatlak. So today uh, we will go through, I don't know how many, we will see how, how much uh, we can find. Um, so maybe five, six or seven different kind of rhythm with some ornamentation and stuff like that. So I hope that you are excited about this live because I think that it's really gonna um, help you a lot having this kind of like feeling of the, the I would say, uh, this feeling of this Mongol murder the the tatlak, the, the, the step uh, and all that. So uh, I will set up the, the camera a little bit further maybe so you can see the murder a little bit better. Okay. So, uh, maybe a little bit higher. Okay. So maybe we can start um, by tuning the instrument all together for those who want to join and try to practice at the same time. Um, but um, as some of the rhythm might be a little bit difficult, <clears throat> I really invite you to enjoy, of course, during the live, but to get back uh, to the replay of the live, to really work on each different style, each different kind. Uh, so you, you will be able to memorize it a little bit better uh, than just seeing all those uh, different rhythm in, 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 in one go, kind of. So I just want now to give you a few rhythm so you can practice later. Uh, to build up your skills, to build up your feeling with the Merhor. So when we will get into more complex B and Tatlach, you will be super ready and then we will be able to make the, the live and, and, and see a Tatlach or a B that is a little bit complicated way faster. So first rhythm. So uh, first the tuning, sorry. <laughs> Okay, so we start with the lower string, so the string that is uh, in the outside, so this one, the lower one. Also a way to warm up the wrist and, and the instrument. Okay, now the higher one, so the one that is on the inside. So the two strings together, just to, to double check that everything is all right. Sounds good. Okay, so maybe I can move a little bit further the camera so you can have a little bit of the bow together. Ah. Okay. So for the first rhythm, we will start with the, of course, the easiest one and we will gradually go to more complicated one. So I will play it for you a few times just uh, so you can have an idea of what we will see. So this is 
definitely uh, the horse gallop. Ta ta ga da 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 ta ga da. Okay. So basically, uh, you hold a very steady bow. It's very linear. One, uh, And keep a very steady bow like that and then we will start to do some kind of hammering on the string on the outer string not on the higher one on the outer string so basically you can do this hammering in in two different uh, way uh, you can do it kind of like um, the way you are holding the the, the neck, as you remember in the Into the Matterhorn uh, show, I explained that the idea of the hand is always kind of like you are holding a little apple or something like that. So you are put set on the neck like that. And then it's kind of like a rotation like this with, you see, a little bit of uh, pushing with the fingers. So first, you can do it uh, a little bit slowly to get the, the right position, the right angle, the right distance and everything to get the string. So for example, like that. So that's the first uh, way to do it. The second way, for those who might not be that comfortable with this kind of like position uh, of the fingers, you can do it just by kind of slapping the, the, the string. So it's much easier, but the sound is not as uh, bright. Um, the, 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 um, the sound of the, of the hoof of the hoofs of the horse are not as um, sharp, it, it's not as clear. So you can use it like that uh, in the beginning to get the, the ID, to get the rhythm and everything. And then I would advise you to get to this other version, which give a, a little bit more sharper uh, sound, something that sounds more closer to the, to the hooves of the horse. So we can see this second version, which is a little bit easier. Okay. So the idea usually we are uh, in this area because after we will have a different kind of combination with the fingers with, which will be in that area. But know that you can eventually uh, tap anywhere on the string. The sound will kind of be similar. So. It's, it's gonna be always kind of the, the, the a similar sound wherever you are uh, on the string, but usually we stay kind of in this first uh, hand position, okay? Um, something that you might want to be careful about is uh, the rhythm. Of course, it's not exact, even though the bow is totally linear, one, two, one, two, the, the finger, the tapping is not linear. So it's not like that. See? One, two, three, one, two, three. That's not correct, obviously. That's one, two, and one, two, and ta, 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 ta. 
ta 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 so So that's very important because I see uh, a lot of beginner kind of try to do this uh, rhythm, but they tend to do it very linear. So one, two, three, one, two, three. And then it kind of lose this, uh, of course, the gallop rhythm, this uh, energy and, and this vibe, you know. So that's very important to, to be careful with the rhythm. So we will play it a little bit uh, slow in the beginning and gradually go faster to reach kind of the, the, the pace of, the pace of uh, a galloping horse. So we will do it maybe a dozen times or something. So start slowly. If you are playing uh, now, we can play together first slowly and gradually uh, move a little bit more fast. <laughs> I think that you should uh, get this rhythm, you should get the idea behind this rhythm that's pretty um, basic and pretty easy. So um, tell me um, how to say, if you have any question about this first uh, rhythm, if you have any uh, interrogation, if anything is a little bit weird or complicated or something, feel free to to ask on the chat if everything is good we will move to the the next uh, rhythm so oh thank you <laughs> thanks andres andres is just saying uh, that he find this instrument uh, very beautiful so the horse head I love this instrument so much. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's awesome. So I'm glad you like it. <laughs> so okay, now what we can do is to complicate it, complicate a little bit this rhythm. So by using the bow accent so what we will do now that's kind of gonna be a bridge to the next rhythm which are using this very uh, wavering uh, bow so we keep that rhythm okay <laughs> Instead of doing the bow like one, two, and one, two, and one, two, and one, two, and we will do one, two, and 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 so you can do a whatever the number of bow uh, that you want, like for example, uh, two times one, two or free time or four time, whatever the comfort that you want. But what we want to do now is to avoid having the bow going back and forth each measure. So 
Let me illustrate that. I will just play the bow. So one, two, and 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 one. Okay? So instead of having the bow moving uh, back and forth a lot, it's really gonna be stretched in the in the time kind of to keep this uh, flowing bow kind of. So we will play it um, the same way as we did before, first slow and then gradually go a little bit faster, but we will use kind of this wavering flowing uh, bow. So you don't need to be exactly the same way as I am going. Just do at least two measures per bow. You can do three if you are comfortable. You can do four, you can do five. And it doesn't need to be like two and two and two and two. It can be three and five and three and two and four, whatever. Um, it's very important in my opinion that you start uh, as we will gradually go deeper, deeper in the B and in the Tatlaq uh, to, to the... Um, it's very important that you start to get this non-structured uh, form. Um, in classical music, usually we start with a, with a pulling bow and the measure are kind of complete so it's like we start with a pull and we finish with a pull with a push and so on in in mongol b in mongol tatla it's very very freestyle um sometimes we start with a pull then we go and we push in the middle of of the melody then we go back and so and so forth so it's very very freestyle so you can now with this very basic exercise start to experiment a little bit and, and kind of uh, disrupt the regularity of your bow. So I will, um, exp I would say, on purpose, I will change the structure of my bow so you can eventually start and try to follow the way I, I will do to also get a little bit of this idea. So we will start kind of slowly in the beginning and we will gradually go a little bit faster. So you should already get this very awesome feeling uh, which is like going with a very very long bow and heavy, having this accent and all that uh, with this hammering uh, that should be very very pleasing so I hope that you could uh, do that I, I saw that there were one question I think um, so let's see um sorry karim are the airs of the bow taut taut what what is tout Ta ah, tight you mean uh, if they are uh, strong so you can see uh i will just put the metaphor here um 
you can see that uh, the the I I don't I don't put strength uh, on the on the on the hair of my bow. As you can see, it's a very uh, I will tr I will try to. Okay, I think it's. You see, I have like hair. Uh, it, it's very very loose. I mean, yeah, very kind of super loose. So yeah, you don't need to have like super tight uh, hair for that. The looser it is, the best result and the best sound uh, you will get actually. Uh, when the the hair are too tight, the 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 bow will start having bounciness like that. <laughs> So it's it's not gonna, I would say, grip uh, and 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 dance with the the strings that well actually. So the the looser the string, in my opinion, the better the the more traditional it will it will sound actually. And then you just uh, you see, adjust the tension with the finger to keep the 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 bow in pressure with the strings, okay? Okay, so we can move to a second uh, rhythm. So let's see, maybe this one. another bridge to the next one which will be this one okay so we will see this one okay so now uh, it's more like the amble more like the jaro before we really had the gallop like Tagata, 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 tagata. But with the amble, it's not like one, two, and one, two, and it's more like one, two, one, two. Because the amble of the of the horse, it's like the the right hand, the right hand, the right legs move together and the left legs uh, move together. So it's like one, two, 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 one, two. It's a little bit different. So that's the jaro of the horse so for this rhythm uh, we will start rocking a little bit on the bow so like that maybe i can i can put the the, the phone a little bit lower so you can focus more on what's going on with the bow so we just practice the bow like that. Kind of like a wave. So if I try to decompose, uh, we already kind of saw this uh, wavering, this uh, effect on the bow, but now uh, maybe I can give um, uh, some highlights on this. Remember that the idea is kind of like this. Basically, something like that. So if, if you play uh, the traditional version of the bow, it's really gonna be those three finger, okay? So da, 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 da. I exaggerate a little bit, okay? Just to give you the idea. And I don't know if you can see what's going on with the wrist. See? That's kind of what's going on. 
So it's not like that. Be careful. It's it's not like pressuring like this. Okay. It's just like. Uh, And we go back. So usually the pull is very easy or kind of comfortable and natural, but the push is, is a little bit tricky. So you might have a, a, a pretty cool sound uh, when you are pushing and when you pull, it disappears. So it's normal uh, because the, the pushing is, it's kind of like, a, um, I don't know how to say it's kind of like pulling the pulling the pulling the bow while pushing it something like that. So when we pull the bow it's very natural because it goes in the way of the bow. But when we push the bow this effect kind of goes uh in opposite in the opposite direction. So when you pull um usually it's going to be good and when you push it's going to be a little bit weird. So you might want to practice a little bit more on the push. So usually maybe you can do four times on the pull and try to do eight on the push, kind of to practice more on the push because usually that's where we need more practice because it's a little bit more difficult. So we can try again. And as we saw uh, previously, you don't need to do four times, four times, four times, four times, four times, four times. Time. Doesn't matter. Uh, you can do both exercises, doing sometimes four, 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 or switch and then just do something very freestyle: five, six, seven, four, three, two, four, five, six, two, three, and so on. So it's it's really gonna help you. Um, being more free with your playing and not having very, uh, how to say, automatic uh, behavior. So the more you can uh, be freestyle, the more you will have control and the more you will be comfortable with uh, the melody, the, the, the bow and so on. So you can do both, pra both practice, some with a, a strict number of accent for on each bow or free on each bow and then you lose the strict and the regularity and then you start to just do freestyle and whatever you feel okay so we can go again i will go with uh, not structured okay just freestyle so first we can go a little bit slowly and gradually we will move uh, higher in tempo okay start to go a little bit quicker. So as you can see, uh, this rhythm, just the rhythm, just this accent, this wavy effect is already very mesmerizing. I mean, for me, I could play that just forever. Uh, the sound is so interesting, so smooth, so mellow, so attracting. Um, so it's already something that you can do uh, like, a, 
like a meditation or something because it's very uh, moving. And as you saw at, at the end, I just added the, 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 the two free notes and directly we are like moving and, and I mean, for me, it's, it, I feel that I hope that you can, you can feel that way too. So now we will see uh, what's going on with the, with the left hand. <clears throat> so maybe I can, now that you get the, the, the idea with the bow, uh, I guess I can, I can get closer to, to the finger here. So maybe uh, something like that. <laughs> If I do something kind of like a slow motion, basically it's one time we are playing the note. Okay, so one time we play the note, one time this flickering that we saw, uh, I think it was in the last, uh, in the last live. So one time we play the note, one time we, we make a flick, one time we play the note, one time we make, we make a flick. So you can use the second finger. Actually, I use the second finger now because it's to give you uh, the position of the note, but it's more comfortable to use the first finger actually. So if you use the first finger, uh, just to give you an idea, if we play the first four note of the scale, you would have something like that, okay? That's this note that we want. That's why I use the second finger uh, in the first time. So if you want to use the first finger, it means that you need to change the hand position and go a little bit uh, lower than the usual position for the first, um, the first octave. I hope that uh, you are following. Uh, I don't know. Oh, oh, actually there were some uh, chat there. I didn't see. Um, okay, Bjorn, hello. Hello Bjorn, how are you? Uh, the chat didn't appear. I was wondering if there were people or not. Hello, Lord of the Strings, thanks for uh, joining. Ah, Andreas is asking, is the bow of the murder world influenced by an archery bow? Actually, uh, yeah, not this, obviously, this is totally uh, westernized, but you can see that the original bow, uh, which is used by a nickel, so of course that's a little bit modernized also, uh, but definitely the shape it's obvious. <laughs> uh, I mean, we uh, it's like that with the Mongolian, with the Mongols. So definitely it's obvious that there is an influence. Uh, maybe I will talk about that in, a, in, a, in the next live because there is a lot to, 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 to talk about. There is some legend, uh, there, in, there is some beliefs about how it, it might have moved from being a bow for archery to a bow for music. Uh, that might also be how this was made because if you have a closer look, you can see that the, the, the I would say, the, the neck of the instrument is continuous. So I don't know if you can see here inside, it goes until here. So basically the strings are intention on one wood so that's kind of the same idea of how a bow is made so so yeah there is a lot of connection and if you saw into the if you saw the the episode about the holding the bow into the murder uh in the show into the murder actually the the traditional bow kind of goes and connect with how we we are holding an arrow uh, on the bow while shooting it. So there is connection also uh, between between those. So so yeah, that, that's also super, super interesting. <laughs> uh, okay. 
So that just to give you a little, uh, a little insight on that. So we can get back uh, to the second rhythm. So, or third rhythm actually. So we saw how the bow is working with those accents and all that. Maybe I can put the camera a little bit like that. Okay. So now we will see um, the, the fingering. So as I just showed you, you can see that if you keep the position of the gum, of the, the normal gum, Okay, that's the position of the second finger. So you can also play it with the first one. If you play it with the first one, that would mean that you need to move your hand, hold the hand, not just the finger, hold the hand. Remember this idea of having the, the left hand always together like that, not doing this kind of stuff and moving the hand a little bit lower to catch this note. So first, empty, em empty string, then finger, empty, flick, empty, finger, empty, flick, empty, finger, empty, flick. Pretty easy. <laughs> okay, let's, let's uh, do it a little bit slowly in the beginning and gradually we will give some uh, hit on the buttocks of the horse to go faster. I think that you should uh, totally get the idea. As you can see, uh, when we, we decompose the, the rhythm, that's uh, that's very uh, that's really like a trance. And once it once it it's it, it gets into your finger, it, it's not gonna it will not go away. So you might struggle a little bit. Uh, the time to understand the, the how the finger and flick and, and bow are going together. <clears throat> Sorry, are going together to get that rhythm. And once it's set, uh, it just gonna it's gonna print in your finger. That's super cool. Uh, hello, Anar. Thanks for joining. So, <clears throat> do you have any questions on those few rhythm? Rhythms? So you might understand what I will show you now because I just played it a little bit. I, I just wanted to remember. Um, so when we are playing the gallop, you might have heard these kind of things. So much <laughs> crazy. So 
uh, this uh, rhythm, this kind of like ornament or, or bridge, or I, I don't know how you can call that. This has many, many, uh, actually there is many meanings for that. So I, I will just put the, the, the motherboard on the side like that and talk a little bit about this little uh, bridge. Actually, we already saw a little bit in a previous live, but I will give you some uh, detailed insight about that. So the first thing that it uh, mimics, or uh, if I could say mimics, it's the neigh of the, um, of the horse, obviously. So basically when it's like in, um, in, in the rhythm, it's kind of like we are in, in, the, in the herd of the, of the horse and one horse start to talk to another one and and it's they are neighing to each other while they are kind of like um i would say uh galloping or or so on so that's uh, a first meaning a second meaning is uh actually related to the b so it can be interpreted in few ways the the movement usually with the b it's like so I'm just uh, doing uh, very roughly okay so this can uh, relate to the the the, the rider that are um, kind of like you know grabbing things from from the from the ground uh that's something that mongol uh rider uh do a lot when they are riding the horse they just oh, they just go on the side and grab things for example they lose the hat then they come back and psh, they will grab uh the hat that is on the ground or they grab uh, maybe a, a little sheep or or whatever it's it's uh it's it's something that is quite common so it might also relate to this movement. Another option uh, is also kind of relating to the, the horse race in the Nadam when there is a lot of people like uh, shouting, coo, 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 which means run, 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 uh, and, and doing a lot of noise to push the horse uh, to go faster, to finish the, the race and, and, and give everything uh, it has. So this little bridge can also relate to that. And finally, the meaning that for me is the most meaningful because it's what is closest to what's going on in the movement of the bee. Actually, as you can uh, hear, when we are playing the the jota, it's like something like that. It's super fast, okay. And when we are playing, the the rhythm is kind of like slowed down dr drastically. So that could mean uh, that we are riding the horse. Then we are we will cross a river. So obviously, when we are crossing a river, horse usually they they will they will slow down. They will kind of stop at the river and then they will walk uh, through the river. Uh, usually, they don't they they would not like uh, go crazy in the river and and gallop and run each side. So eventually, the horse might drink a little bit of water. And if the river is a little bit uh, high, uh, if there is a, uh, if it's deep enough, it means that I can also almost without moving from the horse, I can just um, bend a little bit like that, grab a little bit of water, drink, grab from the other side, and then that's kind of like me riding the horse and drinking a little bit of water while we are crossing the river. Once we cross the river, the horse will uh, kind of shake a little bit to, uh, to 
kind of like push the the, the water out and that would be like okay so this little scenery kind of connect exactly uh, with the the way the melody is going so i thought like just to share a little bit of scenery imagery of uh these dance and, and so on so we can see how this bridge work so it it can work on the lower string like that or it can also work on the higher on the the higher string say that it's the same idea on the lower string or on the higher string depending on how you play the joro okay i w i went a little bit crazy so le let's go uh, and see it directly after a lot of talk <laughs> so we start with the joro so you can see that now we play the same note as the higher one. With the third finger. Then it's the harmonic. We go back to the first note we were. I give you now the, the the basic structure of this of this bridge but if you if you hear a different kind of player they will play it with more bow with more accent on the bow sometimes there is no accent sometimes they do more decoration they they so it's it's just the, the base as you know as usual uh, in Mongol music it's always very kind of freestyle so this is the base melody the bass bridge for this part uh, but you can adjust a little bit depending on on uh, what you like and what you want so let's do it maybe one or two more time a little bit slowly and then we will do it two or three times kind of like in the real uh, tempo with a little bit of joro the bridge and the and a little bit of joro okay and i saw someone say oh hello sukhwater well, <laughs>
okay? So now maybe we can do Jara bridge, Jara bridge, Jara bridge, Jara, but kind of for real. So maybe just two bow, two bows of Jara starting a little bit slowly and gradually going to the real tempo and then a bridge, a Jara, a bridge, a Jara. So you can practice a little bit uh, this, uh, this little part. Let's start. So that was a second rhythm, which is quite interesting. Uh, now let's see another one, uh, which is also pretty super crazy awesome. Uh, I will show you uh, a, a simple version because there is um, there is many way to play it, uh, and I know better the the kind of uh, how to say arranged modern version. I didn't go crazy deep in the original uh, traditional version because it's super complicated. Um, so I will just show you the kind of digested uh, version, which can be experimented uh, a little bit. And let's see how you like it. So this is also uh, pretty interesting. That's um, that's part of the Hatlach uh, Jonan, which is a very, very, very amazing piece. Um, but I will make a live specially for this piece when I will finish uh, getting it concretely, because actually this is a piece that shows every single um, every single, um, I would say, every single pace of the horse, there, there is everything uh, in it, so it's super complex, actually. Um, so we will see it in detail later when I will finish to kind of like digest and, and learn it uh, accurately. So I can just give you this little piece, which uh, can be later declined, declined in different version, but just to give you the idea and to give you the mood and the feel of doing this kind of flute of whistle sound on the Merhor. Um, so let's get to, to it. So uh, the meaning, oh yes, <laughs> the meaning of that. <coughs> Basically, when we are uh, riding the horse and we start to gallop, if there is wind, uh, a lot of wind, it can be a little bit like whistling uh, in the in the in the ears. So basically, this little rhythm is the 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 sound of the jara, the sound of the of the gallop of the horse, but with the the how to say with the the color of the wind in it. So we actually focus more on the movement of the wind and we hear with the wind that the sound of the hooves of the, the horse. So that's kind of what this uh, part means, what, what it represents, kind of. So I, I hope that it's interesting. 
that you like that. Um. So first, we need to catch those whistling notes. So basically, if uh, I play the, the, the first uh, gum like that, we will use those notes actually. So now that should give you the notes where the position of where to push, um, put the finger on the string to get those harmonic. And now, how do we do this thing? <laughs> uh, some of you might already have found how it works. Actually, um, the idea of uh, this sound, there is two things that will influence uh, how it works, okay? As you can see, I'm not putting the finger like that anymore. I put them like this. So that's a, that's the first trick. Why putting it like this? It's because I will very uh, softly touch the string. I'm not pushing the string at all. I'm just barely touching it. So if you get the idea of here, See, playing the harmonic doesn't need, it doesn't need any kind of strength. Just by barely touching the string, the note is going out, okay? So here, that's exactly the same principle with the left hand. Now, with the bow, we will uh, start losing the hair. We're not going to push a lot on the bow, just uh, very softly, basically, this hand is super soft and this hand is also super soft. That's how we can do this kind of harmonic, okay? So, if I play just the bow, just the bow to give you an idea of what's going on just with the bow. So first, I play normally. And then I lose the strength. See the sound start to really sound like the wind. Oh, I love that. Actually, if you go on the top of the mount of, of on the top of a mountain, you just put the motherboard and the and the sound. Actually, as I have like the 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 holes on the side. The wind goes through and that's exactly the kind of sound that goes out of the instrument without having playing it, just having the wind go, going through it, okay? So that's exactly the same idea. So after that, once you get the idea with the bow, we can move with the left hand. So, as you can see, you can just practice that to get always the note going out. Now, we will see the rhythm. So, it's uh, decomposed in two parts, kind of two sentences. The first one.
That's the first one. Then the second one. Oh, I need to do it with the first one. Oh, sorry. So again, slowly, the two sentences together, the, it's super hard for me to, to decompose. I'm so used to play it together. So let's do the first sentence and the second sentence together. Sorry. <laughs> Just the two a little bit slowly, okay? Okay, so now we can try to play it, uh, not try, we will play it for real, the real tempo. So maybe just the first time a little bit slowly uh, to get into it and then as we did before, gradually moving a little bit faster. Okay, this this uh, this rhythm is a little bit uh, a weird, maybe. <laughs> Okay, so we saw three, four, three, four, five, uh, I don't remember how many, uh, rhythm on the lower string. Now we can go to the higher string. Do we go to the higher string? <laughs> Let's see if there is uh, some questions in the chat. Today you are all so quiet. What happened? <laughs> Or is it because I talk too much, I share too much things, maybe? What happened? Okay. So let's go to the to the I will drink a little bit. Let's go to the to the second string, to the higher string. Um for Roy Boss. Love it. Did you use both strings? Uh, no, just the lower one. I think that if we play with the two strings, that's going to sound a little bit messy because uh, this string is going to sound louder. Let's see. <laughs> doesn't sound good uh, we cannot hear the whistling anymore so usually for that we only play on the on the on the lower string to really get the the, the whistle super bright without any disturbance so <laughs> Okay, so that gives you some uh, interesting, uh, nice rhythm to work. And now let's use the second string a little bit because now uh, we really used the first one a lot. We need to balance and use this one now, okay? 
So, do you remember uh, the second and or third uh, rhythm, which was? Now we will play it on the higher string. So that's when things uh, start to. Bjorn is asking: Is this considered a more intermediate technique? Are you talking about the the whistle, uh, the whistle technique, or all those uh, gallop and horse uh, rhythm, or just the whistle one? If if, well, basically. Um, Except for the very first technique that we saw, which was this. Uh, the, 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 the other techniques are, were, uh, yeah, kind of intermediate, intermediate and, and a little bit advanced for some. Um, it's not actually the, 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 the I'd say, technically, it's not too crazy. It's not. Because those rhythm, just the rhythm, it's kind of intermediate. Let's say it's intermediate, not advanced. Just the, this kind of rhythm, okay? Um, technically, it's easy. It's easy to intermediate, okay? But to get the mood, to get the the bowing, <clears throat> to get the 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 the. the to really get this mood of horse gallop of, of of rhythm of you know like it's really attracting and all that i mean i guess you understand what i'm saying then that's gonna be a little bit tricky uh the same as i was saying a lot of new uh player the first rhythm they played like that so technically that's correct but it doesn't sound like a horse. It doesn't sound like a gallop. So the right version would be like that. So technically that's kind of easy to intermediate, but then to give the mood and, and all that, that would be at least intermediate to advanced depending on the on the rhythm but i might not go let's see with the time maybe i will go with super hard uh, rhythm like that this one today I don't know if we have the time for uh, That maybe we will see. I don't know. It's already one hour and, and fifteen minutes. I didn't. I, I didn't think that it would take uh, so much time. Actually, so let's see. Uh, so with the, the 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 second the second string, a rhythm that will. Um, the, I guess that it will flow very easily now because we saw those previous uh, rhythm. <clears throat> So we will see this rhythm. Mm, actually, there is three version of this rhythm. So mm, let's start with the easiest one. Okay, first version, second version. Version, third version. That's going to be hard to start directly. So we will. 
will see those three uh, rhythm right now. So the first one. The first one we use only two notes. Again, the work, a lot of the work, maybe 70% comes from the bowing, from, from this wavy, uh, very nice uh, effect. So we will use only two notes. We will use those two notes. So we play both strings together, obviously. So empty string like that. Then first note. One note that you might have played already a million times. Then with the little finger. So we use those two notes, okay? This is the first version and the easiest of the three because the first finger is always in pressure on the string. It's not gonna move, it's always playing the, the note. It's not uh, getting loose or anything. So you put the first finger and you don't need to think about it anymore. So again, I will play a little bit slowly in the beginning. Um, there is not much to explain, it's just like hear it, feel it and try to reproduce, maybe try to play with me. So first I will play slowly, only slowly, maybe a few, few times. And once we, uh, we saw it slowly, then we will do the same slowly and gradually go faster. Okay, so. <laughs> Okay, was it slow enough? Did, can, could you uh, catch the, the ID? Just checking. So I, I think that it should, it should work like that. Um, so now we can play it again. Start slow, maybe a little bit slower than that. And gradually push, 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 push to, to go a little bit faster. Okay. So that's uh, first uh, rhythm. So now that you understood this one, we will go next uh, level 
this time the first finger the first finger will not stay on the string all the time it will uh stay take out come back take out come back take out come back take out okay so no need to talk too much i will show you directly maybe uh as the bow you get it now uh, it's better to focus a little bit more on the left hand so I guess maybe like that, that should work good for you. Okay, maybe I, I started a little bit too fast. Again, a little bit slowly. Maybe that was too fast. <laughs> uh, maybe that was too fast. But uh, shall we do it again slowly, really slowly, or or is it okay like that? Might be okay like that. I don't know. Um, well, anyway, I want to push you guys to to move forward uh, to more complicated stuff. So I might I might gradually stop. Uh, decomposing too much, playing too slow. Uh, I might start to just show you the melody kind of piece by piece, but kind of with the real um, mood and everything. Because now we we are in the 20th live, we saw a lot of stuff. I know you guys, you practice a lot between um, the lives and with the Into the Mother World, with the bow and all the practice. So I feel that we might I might just start to to move um, in a more real version to share kind of like not crazy decomposing stuff so we can also see more stuff and be a little bit more efficient maybe. So about that, tell me in the comment, uh, tell me what you think if you want to keep the slow version, the decomposition and, and all that or if we just play. Uh, a little bit more real without decomposing too much. So what do you think about that? <clears throat> Bjorn Beef is asking, does that version not use the bow accent? This version used the bow accent. So I will put uh, the, the camera a little bit further so you can see everything going on together. <laughs> The thing that maybe you cannot really hear the bow accent because the bow accent goes with the finger accent. So the two are together and, and the bow accent is actually supporting the, 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 the cut off kind of the, the pull off hammer, uh, how we say, um, pull off hammer on, uh, basically it's doing like this. So when we do that, we give uh, a little bit of bow accent. So the two are together. So maybe as they are together, you cannot really hear that the bow is working. But maybe I can play once uh, without the bow, just playing linear bow without accent, and the second time with everything, okay? So first, linear bow, let's see. Now, with the bow. 
I hope that you can hear the difference. <laughs> so definitely uh, the bow is super important. Sorry with the bow and playing slowly, that's a little bit weird, but definitely uh, maybe when you play slowly to practice more on the kind of what I just did, uh, when you play slowly, you can focus more on the left hand and, 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 and work more on, on the left hand, okay? And when you start to push and go in a real tempo, you can start to, to add the bow. Because uh, for me, let's see if I can play slowly. I, I always, this is, a, this is a jaro, this is the gallop, this is fast. Uh, it's, we never play that slowly. So let's see if I can actually play with the bow effect uh, slowly. <laughs> oh, that's so weird. that's definitely more comfortable to play faster uh, with the bow. That's a little bit weird to play uh, slowly with the bow accent, to be honest, okay? And before, some tells me, um, because some people actually asked me about the bow size and told me, oh, you have a long bow and so you can play long, uh, long things and, and so on. So this is a um, way smaller bow. And still, it works. Okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. So that's like a sixty percent of the the other bow. Okay. If it's a long bow or uh, actually this is more comfortable uh, the size of the bow doesn't matter uh, if it's smaller it's still gonna work you can still play a long uh, effect long streak of accent if it's long or, or, or small doesn't matter okay so we saw first version of this rhythm second version of this rhythm, now the third one. So, uh, So on this version, definitely the the, the bow will really give give the um, the this smooth this gallop because on the previous version we had this hammer on pull of hammer on with the finger which gave this uh, temp this tempo, but here we we are losing uh, we are using the loose string. So if we don't use the bow, it's kind of it it will sound like it's it, 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 one leg is missing, kind of. So the bow here will be very important. So first we will play it without accent, just to get the idea of what's going on with the left hand. And then we will play it kind of for real with the bow accent and everything, okay? Eh, sorry. <laughs>
Okay, so maybe now we can play it uh, kind of for real with the, so maybe a little bit faster with the, the accent of the bow. <laughs> As you, can, as you could see, I, I mixed. Um, <coughs> sorry, I mixed the, the the second version and the third version together. So a little bit of the second version, a little bit of the third version, and it, it kind of like uh, mix uh, the thing a lot, super nice. So I will just drink a little bit of water. So, do you have any questions? Do you have any things that are a little bit unclear that needs some slow motion, some zoom, some decomposition? Um, or is everything clear? So maybe we can see the Balchinger, uh, Balchinger uh, rhythm. So since there is uh, no questions or else. So as we saw the bridge, you remember the, the water or the thing that we grab uh, on the lower string. So just to make, to uh, remind you. see it also on the higher string so let's see it on the higher string I will play it for you just one time so you can have an idea <laughs> so that's exactly the same idea the same mood it's just the second string it's just the higher string the, 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 the rhythm, the tempo, the attitude, the meaning, it's exactly the same, just the second string, okay? So we can, we can play it maybe two or three times a little bit slowly. So as we did for the first uh, string, a little bit of joro, the bridge, a little bit of joro, the bridge, a little bit of joro. And then we will do the same, but faster, kind of with the real, uh, attitude, the real uh, mood of it. Okay, so let's get uh, into it. So we start with this one. Okay, so of course a little bit slowly. stretch the note so you can find it. Harmonic. You can play both harmonic. So a slide. We go back to the first note. And then again the joro.
one time. Now for real. So as you can see, uh, this little bridge, I played, I played it one kind of in the rhythm. So that, that could be the moment where while the horse is galloping, we grab things that are on the ground. So the horse is not slowing down. We are grabbing something on the fly, kind of. And the second version that I played a little bit slower, that can relate to the moment where we are crossing the river and drinking a little bit of uh, water. So uh, it's one hour, 40 minutes. Do you want to see one more uh, rhythm or shall we call it a day? What do you think? Tell me. And do you have uh, any questions on what we saw uh, today? Was it difficult? Was it interesting? Um, please le tell me in the comment, tell me in the chat now and leave a, a comment uh, in, the, in, the, uh, in the comment <laughs> if you are watching the video in replay. So tell me what you think about this live where we didn't really see a, a specific melody but we saw more like technical stuff uh, that relates to the horse, the gallop, the pace and, and all that. So tell me uh, what do you think? And tell me if you are willing to see one more rhythm, which will be, I think, Balchinker. But I think I will, I will show you anyway. <laughs> so uh, let's do one more. Uh, let's do one more rhythm. So that will be the rhythm for. Um, I think there was like one. Bjorn is saying it's a little bit difficult, but I have to back and practice it afterward. Yeah, yeah, that I, I know. Uh, Blaviken, I really need to work more on my bow technique. I have many difficulties. Hey, <laughs> so maybe now the level was like before that was here and now it's like <laughs> it's like moving uh, 10 step uh, directly. So, but you wanted, you asked me on Discord, you were like, yeah, we want to play the Jora, we want to play the horse. And I was like, hey, that's not that easy. Now you have it. <laughs> so, how goes we want more? Okay, let's see. Let's see, Balchinker. I will, I will try to keep the live within two hours because uh, if it's like two hours and a half or something, uh, that might be too long. So I told you, Blaviken, I told you that was hard. <laughs> but that's okay. Now you, you can you can have those rhythm in the background, you know, you don't have to practice it like crazy uh, until it's perfect. I would suggest you, especially if you are a beginner, not I'm not talking to you, Blaviken, especially just to the person who are watching this video. Um, maybe I should have said that in the in, in the beginning of the video, but if you are starting the Maruhur, if you play for a few months, this read this kind of rhythm usually they start to sound good after five or six years. Okay, 
uh, it's not gonna sound super crazy awesome after one or two years. For many reasons, uh, for the bow, the bow, this bowing is really taking a lot of time. Um, it's, it's, uh, it, it, it takes a lot of practice and it takes a lot of time. Usually maybe two or three years or something like that. And the finger, the time that it gets really comfortable in the fingers, it's also gonna take a little bit of time. And the most important, the way you will live this rhythm, uh, not just play uh, first finger, fourth and accent, four, first and accent, and really like feel and, and feel the horse, you know, uh, feel the gallop. It, it's going to take a little bit of time. So you don't need to be crazy about those exercises, like doing nothing else until it's perfect. I would suggest you just um, now that it's in the live, you will be able to, to get the replay and all that. I, I would suggest you just to once in a while, you know, when you do your practice, oh, maybe I can practice a little bit this horse gallop, how it was again, and what, what was it? Ah, yeah, okay, I remember, and then practice a little bit. And really trying to go very peacefully with it, not like, oh, I need to play it super crazy, awesome, it needs to be perfect, and, and then practice, 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 practice crazy. Um, it might not give you a good result and it might not give you a fast good result so actually slower is faster uh, when it comes to this kind of stuff so that would just be my little uh, experience advice you don't need to be like uh, totally obstinate with that you can just take it a little bit slowly practice the first rhythm well until it's kind of super cool and then see on the parallel the other one and gradually uh, move to the to the to the other more complicated one okay and if you have a question when you are practicing not now during the live but later you can join the discord you can contact with me or with the community uh, with the other person that can play those kind of things well you can show your videos, you can, you can ask why it's not sounding the same, what is missing, what is wrong, or, or sometimes it happens, okay? Um, just like feel free to ask, to share your, your content, to share your, your playing, uh, ask is it correct, is it, is it fine, uh, does it sound well, and, and get some advice and, criticize and critics, uh, positive and constructive critics from the community, from me, you know now that I'm super always happy to share and, and to help you progress and improve. So very feel free to, to share and, and all that, okay? So uh, Andreas, wow, Orod is the best Discord server ever. Okay, thanks a lot, I'm so glad. <laughs> so yeah, I'm super happy. By the way, we, we reached uh, 300 person on the discord now so it, it's like uh, it's really growing it's growing slowly but just like our practice slower is faster <laughs> so i find it good to separate playing for practice and playing for enjoyment yeah exactly Bjorn. that's exactly the point um usually for my my students what i say is like you need to have like at least 30 to 40 or 50 percent of fun when you play um, and in the in the leftover so basically like 30 to 50 percent of the time you are playing it needs to be whatever you want not uh, specifically mongols murderhood not traditional murderhood it can be anything uh, just whatever you want improvisation song that you learn uh, whatever and then in, in the left over of the time that you have when you practice, half need to be strictly um, things that you already know, but that you need to, 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 to make better. So really the, the gum, the bow accent and, and all this kind of exercise, very slowly to, to really make them comfortable, smooth, soft in your body and relaxed, kind of like a meditation yoga things. And then the second half, it needs to be to prepare new things. 
and not like five minutes of the song A, five minutes of the song B, five minutes of the song C. No, 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 no. Only the A song, for example. Once this song is finished, okay, you can put it in the first part, the thing that you already know but that needs to be refreshed or improved. And the time for the, the learning, it's always, in my opinion, to, to make it better, to make it more efficient, only learn one thing. When it's learned, okay, it goes in the, in the, in the part of improvement, but not learning many, many things together at the same time. It's just going to make you confused, confused. It's going to mess with your muscle memory, especially if it's many different kind of B or tatla, which are sometimes a little bit mind uh, effing. So, so only one thing when it's learned and, and you can play it by memory and, and it's, it sound good and all that, okay, in the A box, the box of the improvement, then the new thing, that, uh, next song, next technique and so on. So yeah, that's a very, very good point, um, Bjorn. So now, uh, we will see this Balchinghe uh, rhythm. So maybe not the complete uh, B, but basically the rhythm. It's it's uh, it's almost all the all the all, all the tatlak. So. <laughs> So I, I will play, so it, it, it's the, the sound of patching here, that's also a jara. Um, and, um, and I will play it slowly so you can get it and then as uh, before, a bit faster. for the slow version. Uh, I don't think there is anything to explain uh, specifically, but I will still decompose and, and, and explain you a little bit the, the different thing. So basically, flick on the highest string with the little finger. Uh, some people play it like that. Oh. a little bit boring and not as interesting um, but that's really my taste um, I find it that this way of sliding and all that is is very very interesting it's super super awesome in my opinion uh, and it's a little bit also different from the previous one because if we play like that <laughs> It's very close to that. So it, it doesn't make, it, it, it's not making, it's not really making a new rhythm. It's just like the same rhythm with another note, kind of. So that's why I find it not that interesting. And I prefer to, to play it, and that's really my, my taste, okay? Uh, I prefer to play it with this kind of mix of slide. Also, because that's super interesting to play it like that, uh, the, 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 the movement of the hand, the, the finger, the flicking and the slide and all of that together, it's super joy, it's, it's very enjoyable to, to play actually. Uh, it's not just like uh, moving one finger like that. Um, so it, 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 it's 
again, make the playing a little bit more richer and having something that is different from what we just uh, saw, like the, the five or, or six previous rhythm, okay? So, so um, some plays it with just this fingering, some play, plays it with the slide. So for me, I prefer the slide version. That's why I show you uh, this slide version. So, and see, I would tend to use the second finger because if you use the first finger, that's really gonna make uh, a lot of movement um, with the with the hand. Uh, so with the second finger, it, it's uh, a little bit shorter the the movement that you need to do for the slide. So it's more comfortable. So you can play with the first one, first finger, but it's not super comfortable in my opinion. That's that might make a little bit of tension, and you might not be able to hold it for too long. Uh, with with the second finger, that's a little bit more comfortable. Okay. So, with the second finger, and we come to, to play the, um, the same note as the higher string. So, first, uh, fourth finger flicking the higher string, and then with the second finger, we slide on the lower string, okay? Okay, and then something that is also interesting, it's we're gonna make a reversed flicking. So instead of going like that, we will go like that, kind of like uh, throwing uh, something like away. Okay, so so I exaggerate a little bit. Okay just so you can get the ID, then you need to find your, your flow to get the right sound. Maybe I can show you that a little bit closer, like that. with the bow. that you you get the you get the the idea of this so maybe i can play a little bit of the balcin here uh, without decomposing we will see later just for your your curiosity <laughs> Thank you. 
was a little bit of the hot on balching care so okay so I think uh, I think that's that might be it let me let me think well there would be some few other um, some few other rhythm but now it's already two hours so maybe we can do the more advanced uh, the more advanced um, rhythm in the, in, the, in the next life maybe in few lives so there would be the the one also interesting and there would be the camel uh the camel gallop if i can say camel gallop mm -hmm. that is uh yeah the the last one is is for for the camel so it's uh so yeah it's like uh it's like the the gallop of the of the camel not of the horse and for the but that's very similar so that's something that we will see also and um there is actually the 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 sound of the horse that is uh stuck with the urul. um it's kind of like a, a a piece of leather that is grabbing the the front legs with the the the, the back leg. So it's it's making the horse uh, it avoid the horse to go far away. So if we want the or if we want the horse to specifically eat some kind of grass, we can put the horse in the area and then put this um, leather strap. To avoid the horse going too far and eating the wrong, the wrong um, herb or wrong grass. So let's see if I remember. I didn't play it for a little while. So let's see. can just play for you this orote sharak to finish the, the live to give you another one but we will we will not see it uh, today just to give you some uh, insight for the next upcoming things okay Thank you. 
so that that's a, a little bit uh, shorter version than the than the real one but that's the auto and I actually I have here let me grab it uh, so you can you can see so you see it's like uh, the the that we put on the on the on the front legs down and this on the back one so basically the horse cannot go uh, far and and as you can see in the rhythm of this tatlak uh, it's like okay just a second i will i will make the horse for you okay so basically it's like the horse is 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 walking and it's like he tries the horse tries to 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 gallop or to move faster with that but as it's stuck in this it's kind of almost falling and that's why the rhythm get uh, a little bit crazy in in that moment that's exactly illustrating the way the horse is behaving weirdly sometimes jumped a little bit uh, while having this on his uh, legs so that's orote shark so i think that's it for today uh, we went in a live for two hours today we saw a lot i think i hope that you enjoyed and i hope that we saw a lot that it was very interesting for you and that it's gonna uh, help you uh, improve your feeling with the motherhood improve your knowledge and all that so leave uh, uh, leave a comment below to say what you thought about this live if you enjoyed if you liked if you want more things like that or if you want to learn more melodies or if you have any suggestions for the next live um, also if you enjoyed this live and you liked it and you appreciated the, the content uh, that was shared please put a like uh, push the thumb uh, also subscribe to this channel uh, subscribing below you have the little bell and then you click on it and then you can uh, I would say um, ask the bell to give you all notification or something like that so you can be aware when there is a live when there is the release of a new video or eventually a new into the murder episode that might come soon so so definitely all support is super appreciated the like the subscription also uh, you can join the discord channel if you want to to share your melody you sh uh, share your music share your, your melody with us get some information get some critique some help or you can also if you are advanced uh, teach me some stuff or teach to the community share uh, things to the to the community your knowledge about the language about the traditions uh, about anything so definitely join the overall uh, discord server the the link is in the description and if you like what I do, if you like the community overall and you want to support it financially, you can do it by subscribing on my website or you can uh, make a single donation. So it's stevemorel.info uh, steve slash contribute. Uh, and then you have different uh, options to make a contribution. Know also that if you subscribe or you make a single donation and then you join the Discord server, you will access a VIP uh, kind of like secret uh, area in the Discord with um, private things. Basically, I share a little bit of the things I'm working on. Uh, before it's released, I also ask you guys a suggestion for the new content to be shared, give you some uh, work in progress of my things and all that. And it's a little bit um, a more private area to share about what we know, the knowledge and all that. And gradually, as the community is starting to grow and uh, there is a lot 
of person, of people that are writing me, asking me questions. Gradually, I might not have the time to answer everyone and I might just focus on this uh, area, on the VIP kind of the subscriber area. Uh, so I will always, of course, try to answer to everyone. But gradually, it's, it's kind of starting to grow and I have a lot of questions and sometimes it's a little bit difficult to answer to everyone at the same time. So I will mostly from now on or gradually move more to focus on the VIP area and really give support to the person who also support me concretely. And for the rest, it's going to be on the live, uh, kind of like a global uh, so I can answer more to more person in uh, in the live instead of answering sometimes the same thing um, to multiple person. So yes, I think that's it. So I enjoyed hearing more complicated stuff. Yeah, I I I, I guess it's uh, it's starting to grow. I mean, we saw a lot of things. Uh, now gradually we will start to to push. The, the level up uh, I'm, I, I'm not sure exactly what I'm, I think that in the next live I will go for Toja uh, okay I will I will play it for you now uh, because I really I really 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 like this piece the Toja Gelsen so it's on the ikel I just need to see how to play it on the on the motherboard So I really, really like this melody. I mean, it's super, super nice melody. I really love it. Um, I really like this melody. And that might be a very nice exercise to practice the synchronization between the fingers, the ornament, the bow. It might look a little bit easy, but it's not that easy to play, actually. Uh, so that might be the the the, the next uh, one to juggling or actually someone asked uh, takmo so maybe I can play it for you now and then you can leave a comment if you want to see to juggling in the next live the one I just played or the one that I will play now hotton takmo <laughs>
So this might be uh, the the next live. Uh, this Hotten Takmo, the one I just played, or the one from before To Jagelling. That's my ID for uh, the the next live in two weeks. So tell me what you think. Uh, which of the two you like the most, or if you have another suggestion for the next live. So I think uh, that's it for today. I hope that you enjoyed. As usual, feel free to like, to share, to subscribe, to join the Discord, uh, and to get in touch with any question that you um, may have. So I'm really glad that you joined me today for this live where we shared about the gallop the gallop of the horse, the rhythm that represents the horse pace, uh, the gallop, the trot, and all the jaro. So I really hope that you enjoyed. And until next time, may the blessing of the eternal blue sky be upon you. See you soon. <laughs>